Are you filming? Mm -hmm. This is a good tip. If you get tired in the workout, you bend over like this, you get more air in because you can breathe in through both holes. <laughs> I really am stretching because something's tight. <laughs> you gotta get warmed up for this. Tips don't come easy, right? <laughs> <Don't try. laughs> Give us a three, two, one. Shit. All right. Shit. Oh. Make sure you get. We're gonna be slow and deliberate. We're gonna entertain the tits off these. What's up, everybody? We are back tonight. The 2015 CrossFit Open season sort of reaches its peak. The culminating moment with the 15.5 wide. We got some rowing. We got some thrusting. Here to break it down for some actual tips. My man, barbell shredded coach, Mike McGoldick. Tell us about this workout, dude. Thanks, Chris. All right, guys. Uh, we've got for time workout. So unfortunately, it's not an AMRAP, which means you actually have to complete it. You can't wait for the clock to expire and ah, just chill out. Damn. I know, bummer, right? <laughs> However, it didn't look too bad. You saw uh, how quick those guys crushed it. Now, I'm not saying that you'll get it done that quick. I'm saying you could get it done that quick, but anyways. So for time, we've got 27, 21, 15, and 9. Rolling for calories and thrusters. 95 pounds, 65 pounds there. Um, 72 reps on the rower, 72 thrusters total. So not a whole lot of work uh, in the grand scheme of all the other workouts. Um, and at least you can sit down and do some work on the rower. <laughs> Keep looking, don't look away. We'll be rowing. All right, so a couple of my suggestions, um, you know, we'll start with the rower. You know, from what I saw was Samantha Briggs and Camille and Andy Thorzard are doing it. Um, you know, it was like seven to eight minute workout. So if you're trying to figure out how fast to go on the rower, think about maybe like a 2K pace. So um, we're going to learn a lot as the weekend goes on. More people are going to do it and redo it and learn a lot. But for what we know right now, uh, it looks like you know, choosing your 2K pace looks to be pretty good. Uh, however, it's gonna get faster towards the end. So maybe starting off 2K somewhere around here in the 27 and 21, and then you eventually kind of want to speed up in the 15 and nine, just because you're gonna be transitioning more. So it's actually gonna get a little bit easier, gonna be more painful, but um, it, you will be getting to them faster. So think about that. Um, if, you know, for any rowing technique that you might, you know, want some help with, Go to Technique Wad, check out all the rowing videos and series that we've got there. Well, link it, below. Yeah, link, link, below link below. down below. There's a ton of information. We've got all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, you saw Samantha Briggs doing like the really high stroke, pulling like as far as she can. And there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, say that, you know, the, the longer the stroke pull, the more of a calorie you get. So maybe, you know, one stroke per pull, you get calorie. Um, me mess around with it. But I didn't really see that in the later rounds as they got more tired. So... Um, just play with it and see which one works for you. Um, I generally don't do that. I just row harder. So um, that's my suggestions on the actual um, technique of actually pulling it longer. And then uh, damper setting too. That's going to come down to personal preference. Um, the higher the damper, the more power it requires to pull it. Uh, it feels a little bit slower. However, it's probably going to gather more calories as you go. Uh, I don't know all the science behind it, but again, it's going to come down to comfort because you're gonna be on this for about half the workout, a little bit less, or excuse me, a little bit more, uh, according to what I saw. So um, again, just think about the damper being maybe where you're at on your 2K or maybe a little bit higher. Just put it wherever you're most comfortable. Huh? That's right. Okay guys, uh, as for the thrusters, uh, first thing, try to remember to break, okay? Um, you've got 72 total reps, first set being about a third of it, 27 total reps. Um, you don't have Sam Briggs motor. You know, they made it look really easy. Even Dave Castro said it in the, uh, the post interview. Like, a lot of people are gonna wanna break this up. Just think about trying to get back to the rower so you can be faster on the rower and not so much about getting the thrusters unbroken just because it's only one set of it. So break them up, always descending reps. So think about like, um, you know, you've got 27, so you could do like, what is that? You could do 17, break, and then do 10. So always make it easier on yourself by going down in reps. Remember to spend plenty of time mobilizing the thrusters because the more time you get opened up, the more efficient you're moving the barbell, the easier it is to get back to the rower feeling good so you can row a little bit harder, all right? So uh, in a second here, I'm gonna show you a couple of quick stretches with the barbell to help you set up in a better front rack, which will keep you in a more upright torso so you can move the barbell much more efficiently. And again, get back to the rower feeling good. Okay, and then finally, uh, what about what shoes to wear? Well, 
if you're someone again who's going to spend some time trying to get you know more mobile for the thrusters the the, the better position you're in the easier it's going to be that the better you're going to be able to breathe so weightless shoes are going to help they're going to help you stay in that more upright torso and you're going to move a lot better they're not going to make a huge difference on the rower it might be a little awkward having an elevated heel on the rower but it's not really going to throw you off or make you worse so it'll just be a little different but the tax of that is going to be really helpful here so um, wear weightlifting shoes is my recommendation and then practice emptiness <laughs> no I'm just kidding um, sorry so make sure you spend no time eating <laughs> Make, Make sure you spend as much time as you can eating. eating. So, I recommend wearing weightlifting shoes. Beeper space. <laughs> Pause. Camera. <laughs> Go into this workout as empty as you can. I think that um, the lighter you feel and the less food you have in your stomach, you're going to move much more efficiently because this one's going to burn and you want to feel very efficient and very light. Get the heart rate up really high. Get the aerobic system good and warmed up. Spend you know five to ten minutes getting the heart rate up high, and uh, make sure you rest. Spend the time mobilizing, and then you're ready to go. You would eat gravy and biscuits before doing this. As long as it's uh, gluten free gravy. Gluten free gravy. And biscuits. No. Do they make that? Not a thing. <laughs> it's, it's called something else. It's called like a French cookie or something. Not in my America. Mobility. Mobility. Mobility, Mike. <laughs> Mike's mobility. Ooh. All right, we're getting mobile here. Okay, so my recommendations on uh, some stretches and mobilizations to help you know get prepared for the thruster are as simple as actually getting a barbell, right? Holding it in a front rack. Okay, I like to do full hand on the bar because this helps make a, the stretch more difficult. And then have a buddy come up and kind of push the elbow up and around. Ooh, it's tight. Mm. You can even say. Uh, all right, I'm gonna push my elbow down into you, contract, and then relax. You might see it go up a little higher. Wow. And then, <laughs> and then switch sides. Boom. Come back over to the other side, have them do the same thing. I'm gonna push down into you, one, two, three, relax. And then it goes up higher. Cool, all right. And then see if that helps a little bit. And um, yeah, that should work. It should work good. Boom, Mike, anything else to add? Yeah, on the topic of mobilizing, um, I just showed you the shoulder stretch, so that's going to cover you for the front rack going down into a front squat, and then even going overhead, it's going to help. Um, hip flexion as well, all right? So you're kind of in the same position on the rower as you are in the bottom of the squat. So the you know more opened up you are in the hips, high hamstring adductors, um, make sure they're good to go, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Good, good greased up, eh? Good, yeah. Put some yeah. WD-40 on there. Boom. Awesome tips. I should freeze for now. You know, all seriousness aside, <laughs> all, jo all jokes aside, seriously, this is the last week. Have some fun. Congratulations on making it this far. I hope that you find some good tips and humor in this video and, you know, it helps you realize that this is all for fun, right? There's only like one or two people in the world that actually make money doing it. So enjoy yourselves. Chris's hot tips for the ladies. And the fellas. Chris's hot tips for the ladies a and the fellas. Hello, friends. It was bound to happen, you know. We are here tonight marking the end of the 2015 CrossFit Open with 15.5. And because this occasion is so special, I even went the extra mile for you guys and got a special cake. Check it out. Crush 15.5. Isn't that awesome? It's a special wad, but here's the thing about this wad. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's not all that sexy, right? We racked our brains, racked them, trying to figure out the hottest, most neon tips we can possibly share to make you thrust and row with really just abandon and destroy this wad. But here's the thing, the wad's pretty simple. You're gonna suffer a little bit, you're gonna pull, you're gonna thrust, your ass is probably gonna lock up at some point during the wad, but do not worry about that. Pain is temporary, glory is forever. For those of you making it on, to regionals, or if you're on the bubble, you know, and if you crush this wad, you're going, congratulations to you. That is really, I wanna say honestly, an awesome accomplishment. Really kicks ass. But here's the thing, for the rest of us 99 percenters out there, we will not be going on to regionals. So what does that say for us? Well, we had a good time and all, but what we really need maybe is a few words, a few tips 
I might say, on how we can move on from this failure and make the most of our training for 2016. So what are you supposed to think like if it didn't work out for you this year? You worked hard all year, you gave it your best and it didn't, didn't pan out. Well, first things first, keep the proper perspective in mind. There's like a famous Thomas Edison quote, right? You probably heard it. What she said something like, uh, I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways that definitely do not work. <laughs> so if the open didn't work out for you, you got really hit hard by a wad or whatever, just think, I didn't fail. I just definitely found five ways in which I could not compete with Rich Phoning. And that's okay, because that's what most people find. In fact, they find that much more than just five times. But here's the thing to keep in mind. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep training, right? Next year for 16.1, you have no idea what they're gonna throw up there on the whiteboard. I'm personally hoping uh, for a vicious, uh, vicious, as many donuts as possible, donut eating competition. If that happens, Rich is going down for once and for all, right? <clears throat> Point two to be said tonight. It's about goals. Some tips I share on this segment are hot because they're so neon it's blistering. Other tips are hot because they feature a little tough love, you know, and tough love sometimes burns a little bit. So if you're disappointed with how you did this year in the Open, uh, if you had really, really high expectations about meeting Rich or replacing him on the podium in Carson, I might say that maybe your goal was just really terrible. Uh, it's not always about winning, you know. Uh, the third point I want to say is how important it is to actually value the competition itself. The real value, I think, again, this is just the humble uh, opinion of your Hot Tips host, Chris Moore. Uh, the thing you need to keep in mind about the CrossFit Open, the real value there, is that it's not just a chance for you to win something for yourself that you can have some attention, you can have some glory, you can crush the watch at box, and you can look like a big, tough, thick guy or gal. That's awesome, it's fun. It gives you a short-term sugar rush of reward, and it's great, but that's not what you should be using to fuel your training. That's not what's gonna help you do better next year when it's time for the 2016 Open. What you need to do right now, what you need to do is to think back over these last five weeks, right? You had five workouts. Five sets of strategies, five sets of hot tips and all that. But you came up with five plans. And some things might have worked and some things might have turned out really bad. The strategies didn't fit. Your programming might have uh, fooled you into thinking you're more prepared than you, you were. Whatever it is, this is your opportunity to learn a lesson from what didn't go right and to work that back into your training for next year so you can be really super duper well prepared for 2016. Take the time to be honest with yourself, identify the weaknesses you found in this open uh, series of workouts and fix them, man. You'll be better next year, I promise. That's it for the hot tips, folks. Uh, again, to all the athletes who competed in this year's open, I wanna say one more time from me, from the entire Barbell Shrug crew, congratulations. It's really an impressive thing to do. And also, congrats and a big shout out to the CrossFit HQ team. That open, man, what a big, gnarly, global event. I want to say that's a really impressive thing to pull off. Congrats. Before we go, another big shout out to Rob at CrossFit Gung Fu in the UK. Rob, I know times are tough, man. The fight is big. Keep pushing on. In the end, you will find your reward, dude. I'm really impressed with your story. Uh, and before we go, before we go, if there's anything to be said about these dang hot tips is that we tried our best to make it funny and entertaining, you know, uh, every single week of the Open. And some people thought from time to time that we kept it a little too silly, uh, but you know what? That is the entire point, man. To reiterate one time before we go, you know, in the wise words of that sage, Bill Murray, when you have a good time and relax, that's when you're gonna do your best in life and workouts and everything in between. So, until next year, man, we'll see you for the 2016 Open. Shaka bra. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was no cake, man. <laughs> she punched you with a cake. <laughs> that cake was not soft at all. I am done with the hot tips, folks. Peace. <laughs> Join the conversation every week after the episode over at barbellshrug.com. This is also where you'll find new episodes of Barbell Shrugged, Technique Wad, Nuggets and Pearls, Barbell Business, Get Change, plus new articles every day on our daily blog, written by us, guests of the show, and some of the biggest names in strength and conditioning. So, go there and leave a comment now. Oh my gosh, wow, that's so cool. Yay, that's so awesome. Did you like this video? If so, subscribe to our channel, 
and share this with your friends. And if you want even more free, awesome resources to help you reach your fitness goals, plus some updates that we only share over email, head over to barbellshrug.com and sign up for the newsletter.